Welcome to the Black Belt Business Podcast. My name is Matthew Brenner, and today we have with us Dr. Daggs. And Dr. Daggs is a martial arts school operator. And what's really interesting about her story is that she is actually has her PhD. She has her doctorate. And you would think someone who has their PhD, well, they're probably not going to do martial arts, right? Like they, People consider that like a backup job or something you do as like a side gig. And she decided to make martial arts as her career. So today you're going to hear her journey and how she got there. So thank you so much for, for listening. So Dr. Daz, thanks, thanks for coming on here today. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Such an honor. My pleasure. I know um, when I first invited you on here, you're like, oh, my first podcast. I'm so excited. I feel like I finally made it. A dream come true. <laughs> a dream come true. <laughs> awesome. So tell us a little bit about your, your martial arts or, or your work background before we dive into like where you're at now. So like you say, I did my PhD and actually my mom has a PhD. So I always saw her like my role model. So from the moment I started a bachelor's degree, I always had said that I'm going to earn a PhD and just, I just love the public health area. And that's so my PhD is in public health. And it was funny because when I was doing my master's degree in public health, I, that was in Puerto Rico. Mm. And I actually took uh, Taekwondo when I was there. However, because of life circumstances, like I had three jobs, I was doing my master's degree. I only do it for like six months. So martial arts was always something that I was very interested. I just didn't have the opportunity to actually do it. And so, so I was doing my PhD. As I was doing that, I was working for a healthcare company. I was manager of community health. And then I had my children. So I had children finishing my PhD and working full time, mm. all of that. Wow. When my daughter started kindergarten, they were attending an after school program and they had a, a week session of martial arts with action karate. And we went to their graduation. Now, one of my twins, we noticed that she needed help with her focus. And when we saw them at that graduation, the way that she was paying attention to the instructor and following everything that that instructor was saying. It just literally opened my eyes and my husband's, uh, Mr. Dax. And we were like, this is definitely something that we need to do for, for, for both of them. So they started and I was just getting approval for my dissertation. So I was pretty much just about to graduate. When they started, it was in a, a, a month of December. And the following month, it was the parents train for free. So me and my husband, Mr. Dax, decided to, okay, well, let's just give it a try, see how it goes. And they say, if, if you go come to so many classes, they get a star. So we were like, okay, let's get them the star for the <laughs> uniform. So you were almost like motivated, not, I mean, obviously you wanted to try it, but you were motivated almost because and this is something we do at our schools for anyone who's listening if you have your parents that let's say train for a month for free if you they come a certain amount of times let's say twice a week for four weeks we'll give the student the child a special star for their uniform correct so that way the, the parents are like almost under some pressure to be like oh i better show up because my child wants the star yes right and what I think is really cool is you guys got started from, you said a daycare, right? Was that a daycare or school? It was an after school program. After school program. Okay, yes. cool. And what we do at these after school programs, we, we call it the super kid program, where we come in, we teach five days in a row, and at the end there's a white belt ceremony, and then we do like a mass enrollment. So anyone that's worked with me in the past or seen my stuff online, they know that's one of our biggest repeatable and reliable student generating machines we call it it's part of the one of the corners of the triangle codex where we go to daycares and and after school programs and we recruit through there through a one week program so if that's something you want to do reach out to me and I'll show you how to do it so it seems like that kind of hooked you in right now you took classes and at this point how many kids do you have this is two the two yeah, twins two girls twin two girls, girls yes and who was it that convinced you to take class? I mean, I know it was free for the next month, but there had to be something. Was it just because you took class previously or did your daughter try to convince you? Well, I always liked fitness. I always liked working out. And like I said, martial arts always sparked my interest. 
and they were excited for us to do the month and, you know, kind of like doing something that they were doing. And then every time we were on the mat, they were, they were in the pairing area uh, waiting for us to take our class. And they looked so happy and so excited. And I just loved it. Like, I love the class. I love the workout. I love the instructors, the environment. That's a very important for me as well. It's like a well, it was always, and it is a welcoming environment for everyone who crossed that door. And we will, we don't have family here. It's only me, my husband, and the girls. The families in? Like my family is all in Puerto Rico. My husband, his dad is in New Jersey and his sister is in Florida. So we don't have like family here with us. And we felt like so welcome at Action Karate. And that was like our family. And so everything. Can I ask a question about that? So the reason why I ask this is because martial arts is so male dominated, right? Like there's. In general, you go to martial arts school, most of the time the head instructor or instructors are going to be male, right? And the classes are probably going to be more male. So for you to be able to, yeah, you did some Taekwondo in Puerto Rico, right? You come here, have your two daughters, then you start a class. It's easy to feel, I think, intimidated or feel like you're going to, might get hurt or just like you don't want to look silly on the mat. So I guess what about the environment to you was was welcoming? It's that that, it wasn't only the instructor, but it was the other students. Mm. Like the other adult students, I say that they're all willing to help everybody. Like even, especially when you're new. Like it's that sense of, well, the belonging, I will say. And it's interesting you say about intimidating because we started training, right? Then about Two months in, so we decided to continue training after January. Around February, early March, my husband got hurt. So he could not train. Mm. So I was going by myself. Did you have to convince him to go, or was he just totally on board on his own? For when we first started? Yeah, like the first A month. little bit. Okay, you got like strong arm and Yes, bit. <laughs> I think the fact that it was also for the girls, yeah. that's what really motivated him. Mm. So then he got hurt. One of the classes, so he did not train for like four weeks. So How I was, did he get hurt? What did he do? I think it was one of the moves. I actually think it was you. Me? <laughs> he said that. Definitely not me. That <laughs> it was his ribs and you. they were doing mount. Yeah. And something about that like you push him and he affect his ribs. Oh, gosh. Yeah. We're going to have to delete this part out of here later. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then, so so he got hurt on his ribs, mm-hmm. and he, he had to let it rest for like a month. Oh, my gosh. So I was going by myself, and that was a little intimidating because I wasn't with him. However, like I said, everybody else was so helpful and so welcoming that I just continue going. It took me a little convincing for him to come back. However, once he started to come back, he was cleared by the doctor and he started to come back and see how he lost weight and how more energy he felt. And when we earned that, that first belt, the, yeah, the yellow belt, it was like a life changing. Mm. So we were so, we felt so accomplished that we we were like, okay, this, yes, we're definitely going to continue doing this training and earn our black belt. So how did the girls feel at the time? Like how old were they? When they started, they were like five and a half. Okay. So when they see mom and dad on the mat training with them, how do you feel like that impacted them? Or what did they say about it? Oh, they they were... So the fact that we were doing it, they never really gave us like a hard time going to class because we were going together as a family. Mm. Uh, it was something that we were doing for ourselves, like together. Like we will practice at home. And they, as we were taking class, they were like building friendship with the other kids whose parents were also on the mat. Mm. So it was a combination of all those different factors that really made them love action karate as well. So what was your, I guess, when you started and after you go for a couple months, what was your, did you feel any different after you started training? What did you feel differently? I felt like my whole, like I felt stronger, better shape. Um, My mental health was like so much better. It was like clear, like, like, I, w- I really felt that not only I was doing something for myself as a mom and a full-time, a full-time mom, 
but also something that I was doing with my husband. Like we had time to do something that we really enjoy doing together. And I and I really love like practicing all this stuff defenses with him as well mm. i think when you say with him you mean on him because kind i know you of, like yeah. to beat him up a little bit i've <laughs> yes. seen that before and apparently i like to beat him up as well so <laughs> we both have that that shared experience so how do you feel like that impacts your relationship together when you guys get to practice martial you know obviously like as as parents there's a lot of stressors with the kids and you know, getting them from activity to activity and and you know child rearing and just supporting them and, and there's a lot of clashes that happen between you know, husband and wife or, you know, husband, husband, wife, wife, whatever. So I guess for you guys, how do you, how does it impact you and your relationship to have something outside the home and as an activity that you guys could do together? I would say it brought us closer together because we, he was a goal that we were supporting each other in that common goal of not only earning a black belt, but also, you know, for our health, it's like we were doing something for ourselves, but also for our daughters. I think that what you said about, and I said this several times, especially to the, you know, in particular to the adult students, if you don't take care of yourself, how are you going to take care of your family? You got to be healthy mentally, physically, in order to be there for your family. It's kind of like at the um, in the airplane when they say, hey, if you lose pressure, put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on your kids. And the instinct is to put it on your kids first. But if you don't take care of yourself, you don't put that oxygen mask on yourself, you're never going to be able to help your kids. Exactly. Right? Yes. So what was the impact of that? Like being able to train together and have a common goal? Like how did that impact your relationship? So we, we learn how to build a better family, how to work as a, as a, in a relationship how to communicate, how to talk to each other. There's so many benefits of martial arts that, and the lessons that we learn at Action Karate besides the martial arts itself, but also like life lessons, mm. like how to persevere, how to work as a team. It's all these different components that, I mean, it brought us so close together that now we work together, <laughs> right? Yeah. So you were getting your, your PhD at the time. So that was always your dream you said because your mom did that too exactly right? correct so you always thought was that like always a, a thought in your mind like okay my mom she's successful she had her phd that's i want to do that too for that reason yes for okay. me it was like like it's a goal and i have to do it i'm, I'm gonna do it like there was there was no step back hmm. and then when you finally started to get your phd how did you get eventually you, you moved into becoming like an instructor right and then, so how did that happen? Like, you obviously had this long-term goal of getting your PhD, probably going to work in public health, because that's what your education is, is in. How did you get involved professionally? So it was the head instructor at the time. He approached me and he asked, do you want to become certified on teaching the ninja class, which is the three to six-year-olds? And I was so excited <laughs> because I just love teaching. I love, I love educating others. And for me, educating on martial arts is educating in how to better their life. And at that time, the girls were still in the ninja class as well. And I just got very excited. And I right away, I said, yes, I, I'll do it. And I started teaching the ninjas. Then they asked me, do you want to teach the adult class? And yes. So <laughs> okay. I was teaching two days, a, two, two days a week, you know, having my regular profession or, you know, my full-time job. And then teaching the two classes. I, I just love it. I just love working with the kids, working with the students. Yes. Okay. So the instructor came to you. And he just invited you. He said, hey, we're doing a certification, which is, by the way, if you haven't seen the episode with Michael St. John, you should check that out, where we talk about all the different levels of, of training we do for our staff. So one of the things we do is we certify in order to be able to teach a certain class so that way the instructor can have full autonomy over that class and have the skill set to do it. And the, you know, either the owner or the manager knows that this instructor can handle a class in a certain skill level or age level completely independently. So you got invited to the certification. Now, when you got invited, I think a lot of people, they would probably not invite you because they're thinking, all right, she's got two twin girls. Yeah, she loves coming to martial arts class, but she's getting her PhD right now in public health, like her dream. So was there a part of you that's like, was there any part of you that was like, oh, I can't do this. I got to focus on my PhD stuff. Or was just like, oh, this is cool. I'll do it. 
No, so at that time I just had all was done. Oh, the PhD was done. Yeah, okay. yes. And however, I was I had a new promotion at my job, so it was more demanding. Mm. And however, I was I think I always been a person that I love challenge. Mm. I, I never want to hold myself back from a challenge on a new opportunity. Right. I always want to go ahead and give it a try. And that's why I immediately say yes. And then what was interesting was that they approached me and they asked me and I said, but what about Mr. Dax? <laughs> Your husband. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about my husband? And he, the instructor was like, well, he wants to do it. Then, yeah, sure. I said, okay, you're doing this. So we did it together. <laughs> was that another strong arm situation? We're like, hey, we're doing this? Or was he on board right away? He was on board right away. Okay. I guess because also, it's still, like I said before, the girls were still in that class too. So was he working and busy at the time? Yeah, he was, work, he was working for the Norristown School District. What was he doing for the school district? He was in the maintenance. Maintenance, okay, like cool. Working in the buildings. Okay, yes. cool. So he did maintenance and building. So it wasn't like he had nothing to do. He had a full-time job. You oh, had a yes. full-time job. Correct. But you still were like, okay, I'll do this certification course for my my girls' martial arts school because it sounds like a challenge and, I, and you love teaching. Exactly. So when you go to do the certification course, you become certified. About how long does that take from beginning to end? So the certification was a day. Yeah. And then... Uh, five days after I tested on the certification, taught the whole class. I really prepared myself, and I would say I prepared myself so well that I passed. And yeah, then okay. the next week, I, you know, my day was set or which class I was going to teach every week, and then it just went from that point on. Cool. And I think for you, it's a little bit different than most people. I think most people, they do the certification courses like one day, and then usually it takes them a couple months, right? Anywhere between three and six months, but obviously they're very scholastic focus and you probably went all in and just did everything you possibly can and you were teaching before that too like you were a couple days a week right or, or were you any teaching on the mat at all before that or is it assisting zero? i was assisting, assisting. so you yes. already had a lot of the skill set anyway so for you i think it was it was a lot faster than probably most people but then when you finally got certified you just picked a couple days a week and those are the days that you taught correct so you're teaching a couple days a week you have girls that two twin girls and are they involved in other activities besides, you know, karate or was it just karate? At that time, it was just karate. However, about six months after, then they started getting involved in other activities. Okay, got it. So you have like, a, I think it'd be fair to say you had an extremely busy schedule. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. So you, and obviously your husband's working full time. So when you become certified and you start teaching, you just pick a couple of days a week and those are the, the, the days that you stick to in terms of teaching class. Yes, sir. So where did the, I guess, how long did it take or where did the transition happen from going to, I'm a certified instructor, I come a couple days a week to I'm doing this full time as a career. Like when did that happen and how did that happen? Well, the first one who started was my husband. One day we were home. Actually, my dad was visiting us from Puerto Rico and Mr. Brenner, your brother, mm -hmm. called him. I left him a message saying, you know, call me right away. And I had a feeling like, I wonder if they're going to ask you to be an instructor full time. How did you know that? I just had a feeling. Okay. So. And it's funny that he says, call me right away as if it's an emergency. Kind of, yes. Yeah, it's kind of my brother style. So, so we went, we had lunch with my dad and we were talking about, it my, we were already talking about getting advice from my dad, mm. if that was the reason why Mr. Brenner was calling mm. my husband. Mm. And that afternoon we went and I was correct. They asked me if he wanted to be the head instructor and we went home, we talked about it. It was a big decision. However, he was already happy by just being offered the opportunity because mm. he loves kids. He yeah. loves, he loves working with people. He loves talking. So so he decided he went for it. He became the head instructor. I was still kind of like part-time, but I guess somehow a little more helping because he was there. Mm. And then two years after they approached me to get in this journey, right? Like become the enrollment director in the school with him. Actually, it was Mr. Brenner who asked him first mm. and say. Would you like to be part, you know, invest in this school? So that night we went home and he's like, I was approached and this was what I was asked. And I was like, 
really? <laughs> oh, yes. And he's like, really? I say, yes, why not? And so we have. You mean to become like an equity partner in the yes, business? Yes. So you actually invested financially? Yes. Okay, cool. And when you became an equity partner, what did you have like savings in the bank? Did you take out a loan? Like, how did you guys, how'd you guys do that? We sold our home. Sold your home. Oh my we gosh. sold our home. Okay. And what did you, did you live in, the, in your car? <laughs> what no, did you well, do? Well, 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 we'll move somewhere else. But okay. I mean, it took a few months. First, I started working just like a regular employee. Okay. Where all these financial other details were in the process. Mm -hmm. And we moved to a new, you know, a new place, a smaller place. And however, when everything worked out, we sold the home right before COVID. Okay. We invested during COVID. Okay. That's when the financial went through. Oh my gosh. So right, like right before COVID. Correct. Uh, great in time for an investment. <laughs> yes. Okay. Reason why my mom tried to convince me not to do it. Oh my gosh. Okay. So how did you tell your mom like, hey, I'm still going to do this anyway? I just knew it was the right decision. I knew our lives were better. I, I, I knew deep inside of me this was meant to be, and I just had to have her understand. Like I'm an adult, and this is what we want to do, and want to do this journey with my husband and for my girls. And now, now she's happy with us, and now she asks me, "How are you doing?" <laughs> like now she's excited for us. So I don't. I guess the part that I'm so shocked by. And, I mean, obviously, the fact that you sold your house and downsized so you can afford to invest in the business and not just be an employee there, but also be an equity partner, which is amazing. The part that really is sticks out to me is you had your PhD, which I'm sure, you know, like is not cheap to get your PhD. Did you have a full ride scholarship or did you pay for it? No, I took student, student loans. Student loans. Okay, got it. So you already had a loan out for your PhD. That was your dream because your mom. And then somehow... You ended up doing martial arts and now owning a piece of a, a martial arts school where you and your husband work full time. How did you rationalize that in your head? Like, didn't was there anyone that was like, like, hey, what are you doing? You just got you just spent all this money on loans for education. Now you're not doing that. Like, people must have thought you were nuts. I actually had someone in my family who said something very similar to me a few months ago, and however, you know what? I I'm happy. Let's put it this way. When I was doing my master's in Puerto Rico, I was at a conference and there were a few professionals from the United States talking about how they help the community, especially the Latino community. And at that moment, my goal, I said, my goal in life is always whatever I do professionally is going to be to make a difference and to help someone else. And as long as I know that I'm doing that, I that brings me joy. So yes, I did it in the other profession, the other job that I had before Action Karate. However, some changes were starting to happen that I wasn't too happy about it. And I, and I, and I had a feeling more changes were coming that I wasn't going to be happy with it at all either. And then this opportunity, I feel that came at the right time. And to see how you change people's lives and helping them. You still, in public health, it's about community health. It's about changing for the better the community, right? And I feel like we do that through martial arts. I feel like I'm doing that through martial arts. And I'm in a local community. I feel like I'm somehow, away, some way or another, I'm making a difference. Didn't any part of you, though, feel guilty about wasting your education or, you know? throwing that away, like all the money you invested in your your master's and then now your your PhD and now you're going to go teach martial arts, which required a one-day certification and then, you know, follow-up training after that. What? You weren't worried about that? Like you I was. Okay. In the beginning, yes. Sometimes reality hit. Yeah. And I was like, what have I done? <laughs> okay. Did I, you know, as a human being, it's a, it was a big change. And, you know, you sometimes you question yourself, no doubt. However, and yeah, I had those moments. I mean, one day I was a little, I would say overwhelmed for different things that were happening that day. And I just, just crying. And while my daughters walked in 
And she's like, why are you crying? And I was like, I don't, I don't know if I did this right. And she was like, yes, you did. And, <laughs> and, and that just, you know, with time, now that I look back, you learn from those experiences. Those moments are going to happen. However, like my husband say a few weeks ago, our lives are definitely also better because above all, I'm also a mom and a wife too. And as a family itself, since we joined Action Karate, we, I feel like we have done so much better in our family. Mm. So in what way? Like, what have you done better? Like we spend more time together. I visit my parents now since I started Action Karate. I visit them more often than I ever did before. Because you have more flexible schedule or why? Yeah, because it? I manage my schedule. Okay. And I have to say, we have a great leadership team. Like, mm. a leadership team is so amazing that we can count on them, too, to, like, go away, see my parents, spend time with the girls. And I manage our, I manage my schedule. I manage our schedule. It's not like I had to ask some, someone else permission of, oh, can I take this day off or can I go okay. away? Which you wouldn't be able to do if you're working your public health job for, like, a local government or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Cool. And then now, now that you, you know, you had the school, COVID started, you just invested money into it. Like what happened next? Like, were you just like, holy crap, I think I'm just, I mean, it sounds like your daughter gave you some affirmation that don't worry, it'll be okay. Some wise advice, but there had to be some part of you that was like panicking that you just invested in a business that's now tanking when COVID started, right? Because everyone was quitting, right? I mean, not everyone, oh, yeah. but a lot, you know, a lot yes. of people were quitting. So how did, how did you deal with that? I just had to work very hard. I just, you just had to stay focused. You just had to stay focused, work very hard, do every single effort to sustain, you know, the business. And the good thing of Action Correct is we never close. We were always open, even on Zoom and then doing classes outside. And the families who stay with us, I will get messages from families who stay with us, thanking us for doing what we were doing like not closing the doors and for by us persevering show those families how we care and they started referring other families mm. cool yeah that's one of the things i'm so proud of is that none of our locations closed during covid at any point like my gym i remember i went to like my regular you know weightlifting gym they closed for like a, I don't know, three weeks or four weeks and they had no online offering and nothing. And I remember thinking like, damn, I'm working like 70, 80 hours a week to teach people online, trying to figure this out, make sure it's a good experience for them in the beginning. You know, not everyone knew how to use Zoom, right? And I'm just doing everything I possibly can. And my gym is like, hey, yeah, if you don't mind keeping your membership so we can sustain ourselves. And I'm like, but what are you guys doing? Like, you're not offering anything, you know? And I was just like annoyed by that because as as my fitness business in martial arts, like we were doing everything we possibly could to 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 keep the lights on. You know, we weren't allowed to have people there, but like we weren't gonna sit on our hands and just hope that something happens. Right. And I think a lot of people, like you said, really appreciate that and saw our resilience and kind of they fed off that energy. Right. Well, you were one of the keys where I also made it through the pandemic. Yeah. Because you were doing the intros. Yeah. Online and I, I watched all your videos. <laughs> You watched one of the intros that I did online. Nice. I took your advice. So you're actually an inspiration and kind of part of the support system that really helped me, you know, go through that moment. I appreciate that. Thank you for saying that. And if you're listening now and you're like, what is that? This is something that we do called a class audit where, and this is one of the best things that came out of COVID. So kind of like an NFL player, if you're an NFL player or NBA player, you know, when you're not playing the game, either two things are happening, either practicing or you're watching game film. So one of the things we do as martial artists that most schools, I don't know any school that does this, honestly, is we watch game film. So we'll record classes or record lessons and rewatch it as a team and then do an audit and say, what could we have said better here? What could we have done better there? Oh, that was really great. How could we take away from that? And we watch our game film to be able to improve. And I think during COVID, that really gave us the opportunity because all of our classes were online, so it made it convenient. Now we use our you know, security camera system, which makes it convenient too. But then like during Zoom, it's even more convenient. So we'd watch one of your lessons and I'd say, hey, 
here's what you could have said better here, here's what you could have better there, and that way we're all getting better. We're watching that game film, right, to be, become better martial arts operators and athletes. So now that your daughters are, you, you run a school full time, you and your husband, how old are your daughters now? 13. And when they started, you were? What they started, yeah. they were like five. They were five, okay. Yes. So now that they're entering their, their teenage years, how does, it, how does it impact your life? Like, are they still training? Like, how does it impact their day to day? Well, yeah, they're still training. And so I, so for example, let's say for, for the one daughter that, it was the, she was kind of like the key for everything started because of her focus. She is on a roll. She is very hardworking. And she has initiative on doing things now on her own, like being very responsible and doing the best in school. So you see all those. And she's very involved too, like assisting on the mat and doing private lessons. She's in the demo team. So, and she... She lives also martial arts. My other daughter, she she still trains. Help, you know, take her to classes. They're both senior black belts. Her, it's a little different. She's very determined, though. She's always been very determined. However, she loves performing. She loves her singing. So your daughter is an amazing singer. I remember the first time I saw her sing. I thought we were all being nice to her, like letting her <laughs> sing in front of everyone. I was like, ah, oh, Dr. Dag's daughter. We're going to let her, I think it was like the national anthem I saw first. Yes. At one of our events. Like it was, a, I think, like a black belt. A black belt. I think it was challenge or black last belt year's in, in December, the yeah. black belt challenge. And yes. I thought we were doing you a favor. That's why I, like, I'd never seen her sing before. I haven't seen any videos. I mean, I heard about it, but I don't know. I was like, oh, yeah, we're going to let her daughter sing the national anthem. I'm like, oh, that's like cute. I guess we'll, you know, pretend to, to like it and clap. And then I heard her open her mouth and sing. And I was like, oh, my God, she's amazing. So that was, for me, that was really cool. Also, I just, I had never seen it. So that was awesome. Yes. So as a mom, when you see your daughter, you first got started with your, with one because they, she couldn't focus well. And then you got started. Now you see that they're both determined. One's a little bit more in martial arts now. One's more to the singing, right? Which happens. Isn't it's cool. So... As a, as a mom, and when you look back on that decision to first get started, like, how do you feel like, when you look back on that? I feel that it was one of the best decisions that we did for them. Like, you know, for example, they, I feel they're ready, that we help, we help them be ready for the world, especially in these days. Like, they work hard. They they know what a good friendship is, like who are the right friends and who not so much. And they have strong values as well. And for example, one of them may be going to another school, not the Shamani High School. She applied for another school. And Mr. Dax, my husband, he said, I feel relieved that even if she goes to the school on her own, because she did martial arts. So if anything happens, <laughs> she knows how to, you know, what to do and how to defend herself. Very cool. Very yes. cool. Yes. So you guys feel more confident about her being in a situation where she yes. maybe doesn't know the other kids. Exactly. Or... Correct. Awesome. And then when with my other daughter, she she's so determined. Like she when she wants something, she goes for it and she works very hard for it and nothing's gonna hold her back. And a lot of parents right now are are challenged because their kids kind of got like really impacted by COVID in a negative way. A lot of a lot of kids, right? Where they almost become like, and I feel bad saying this, but almost become like like more lazy, more more time, you know, in front of computer screens. They give up faster on things, like almost like a shorter attention span. And it's like, I mean, it's not just me saying this. This is what I hear from teachers at schools, from here martial arts instructors, like they just give up on things faster, right? So for if someone's listening right now and maybe like they're thinking about their getting their daughter involved in martial arts or, you know, getting their family involved in martial arts like you did, like you know, dragging your husband along too, like what advice would you give them? Like what'd you say to them? So I would say they're always gonna be ups and downs. But the lessons that you learn in martial arts and the results that you see in the long run are it's it's so worth it like I can tell you I had a mom a few months ago but she was a little concerned because her son was like I don't know what he wants one day he wants to do an activity then the other day he doesn't want to and I said listen 
there's going to be tough moments. Well, who's the parent here? You, correct? Yes. So you just tell her straight up, like, you're the boss. You got to be yeah, the parent. Yeah, you really want this for him. Yes, I really want this for him. So, yeah, some, some days it's going to give you a hard time. Some days are going to be difficult. However, you, you had to stick to it. You had to stick to the schedule. You bring him to class. And if you need anything, that's what we hear. And however, it's better to go through those moments now than when they get older. Why? Because if you be, it's like when you build a, ha- a bad habit, it's harder to break it later on in life. But if you build good habits now and, you know, you work very hard for those good habits, they, those are the ones that are going to last for a lifetime. And that's what I told her. So it's better to work hard on this behavior now because the rewards of it later are going to be supreme. Like, it's going to be worth it. I said, trust me, it's going to be worth it. And I love how you can say that with such conviction because you're a mom and you've gone through the same process, right? Like, you know that there's going to be ups and downs in her training or this child's training because you guys have ups and downs, right? You bought a business and then immediately tanked because of COVID that you couldn't even... Nothing you can control. So thank you so much for for being on here today and and for helping so many people in the martial arts industry and inspire them to either A, do this, be able to do this full time, even if they did invest in education, if they feel like it's the right thing for them. But but also just being setting an example of like a a family, right? Of like, hey, this is what I did for my daughters. Here's how I did it too. And being able to make such an impact in the larger community. And also just like, it's 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 good having like a strong presence of like a female in the martial arts because we don't have enough of them. So uh, thank you so much for being on here. And if someone wants to reach out to you because they have a question or you know they want to get advice about hey how do I you know do this full time with two kids or a kid, which is the whole you know navigating that running a martial arts school that's in the afternoons can be tough. So if someone wants to reach out to you, how how do they find you? So. They can just give like your Facebook name or something. Oh, it's uh, Alminda Lugo Diagostino, and they can find me. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. You can reach out to me. I can connect you guys. Now, if you're a martial arts school owner and you're listening to this, you're like, oh man, that's so cool. How do you do that? The triangle codex with the after school programs to recruit new members. How does the certification process work? And you want to learn how to do this for your school so you can scale it and build instructors that can operate the school independently reach out to me, Matthew Brenner, or on Instagram at blackbeltbrenner1, or email me, matthew at wyourdojo.com. Bye, guys.